Under Tangan, he joins us to discuss China's space ambitions, which are pretty lofty, no pun intended. He's a fellow at the Taiyi uh, Institute and chairman of Asia Narratives. Einer, always a pleasure to see you. You know, when I, when I look at this, I think back on when I was a kid and the Apollo missions, and I can only imagine the sense of pride that it must be for the people uh, in China and as they continue basically to leapfrog Russia and just make uh, just tremendous strides in their space program as well uh, as their space station. Well, Sean, absolutely. Uh, China has uh, risen to be the number two uh, space power out there. In fact, uh, in the previous years, they've actually eclipsed the U.S. in terms of the uh, number of, of launches. But it's still far behind. Uh, the U.S. spends uh, literally uh, 200 uh, percent more. Uh, you know, U.S. satellites number uh, almost 63 percent of the, the of the total in space, whereas China's about 10 percent. So there's there's a big gap there. But ever since 2011, when the U.S. decided not to include uh, allow uh, China to participate in the uh, uh, in the space program. Uh, China's been just very, very focused. They've been doing it, and it just shows that you can't, you know, contain somebody who has an idea. And I, I think this would be very applicable to the current situation, especially with technology. Yeah, indeed, no borders uh, up, up there in space. And I want to talk a bit about that 2011, because it's not that the United States just prohibited China from joining on the International Space Station. There's a federal law in the United States that blocks the U.S. from working with China in any capacity in its space program. And if you think about that, you consider how close Russia and the United States uh, work together. What do you think of that? Well, I mean, there's it, it, very different uh, threats, uh, the U.S., uh, Russia versus the uh, U.S., China. Uh, the U.S. always saw Russia as a military threat, not as an economic threat. And uh, they, in quite the opposite with China, they see it as an economic threat, not necessarily a military, although that is changing rapidly as China expands. So the U.S. is always kind of like, you know, showdown at the OK Corral. <laughs> um, U.S. is wearing the white hat. They're always looking for the guy in the black hat. And unfortunately, uh, increasingly, that's China. There's no reason China has not done anything aggressive in space. This, this current launch mission shows quite clearly that the main emphasis is going to be on basic science, discovering the origins of the universe, uh, making sure that uh, you, know, you have very, very accurate timing, which is right. very important to a whole number of things. You know, Einar, it, to me, it's exciting. You know, watching the two stories leading up to you, I thought they were put together extremely well, great access. You just see how involved uh, these rockets are and how uh, just how far China's come in, in a short period of time. Give me a sense for what people are saying in China. How excited are they about this? And what are you hearing from your friends and colleagues? Well, I mean, quite frankly, I mean, there's, there's, I, I know a number of people who are involved in the space program. They're very, very, very proud. I mean, they, they, you know, they just showed this picture. It says, look how far we've come in such a short period of time. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, on a national basis, when you talk to people in the street and things like that, they're always going to say, yeah, yeah, China's, China's great. China's really doing well. And there, there's this sense that, uh, you know, if you go back 10, 15 years ago, uh, most Chinese felt that they were behind, that, you know, they mm. were busy trying to catch up. Now they really do feel that, you know, between 5G and so many other areas where China is leading the charge, and now space. Uh, they, they feel that, you know, China has emerged. Uh, the hundred years of humiliation is over and China's taking its rightful place as one of the countries in the world, not a hegemon. Got a big seat at the table. Uh, let's also talk uh, a bit about the U.S. space program from the 70s up until about 2000. They focused solely on the, uh, the space shuttle. And at one point, they vowed to have a launch every month, every few weeks. That obviously did not happen. It was much more delicate and much more complex uh, than the United States thought. Compare that to the way we're seeing uh, China lift its Taikonauts into space. Only two times a year. It seems very thought out, and it seems there's enough time in there. If they do hit some kind of prob problem, they can push through that. Well, they can. I mean, they can do a launch, emergency launch, in an eight and a half days, uh, which is uh, pretty amazing. I mean, it's uh, because this is so complex. Uh, China only has a limited number of space liftoff stations, which are all located within China. As a compared to the U.S., they have them all over the place. But China takes a very pragmatic view. They're they're not looking for headlines. What they're doing is they're looking for results. 
Uh, in the U.S., there's always a competition. NASA, you know, wanted more budget. Uh, one of the ways to do that was to kind of juice things up and say, oh, you know, we'll be, <laughs> it'll be a taxi service. You know, yeah. you, can, you can get your, uh, your ticket online and things like this. But it never actually came to fruition. Um, NASA has been a little bit heavy in terms of uh, hitting its budget numbers. It always seems to be over. Uh, one of the reasons that they've turned to the private sector, whereas China has been very successful in hitting all of its targets uh, in a very, very measured way, as you pointed out. Yeah, the engine that can. You know what? I'm going to send you a private message later on, and I'll tell you exactly how much coverage this gets from the U.S. media, because right now it isn't a lot, my friend. Zero. <laughs> Andrew, thank you very much. Take care, Sean.